Welcome back to yet another episode of Woolly TV. This time we're doing something a little bit different. So we're reviewing the Monster Easy Rider dims in the Hi-Fi construction, but I've already done the PU version of that. So what this one's gonna be is a bit of a comparison because they're exactly the same bore, one in the PU, standard fiberglass construction with a stringed uh, polyurethane blank. And the other one is what JS call their Hi-Fi technology, which is an EPS core. So we're gonna have some footage on the PU. We're gonna have some footage on the uh, EPS Hi-Fi. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the differences between the two constructions, because I know it can be really confusing with um, a lot of people when we're in the shop and when I'm working, I do get a lot of crew asking about what is the difference, when would you ride an EPS board, when would you ride a PU, can you ride them in, you know, people have this funny thing, oh, the EPS boards, they float better. In my mind, I don't think they do. I ride exactly the same volumes in my EPS boards as I do my PUs. A lot of people say when you're riding an epoxy board, the EPS core, you bring the foam down because it's more buoyant in the water and sits up higher in the water. I sort of don't really buy into that one. I ride within half a litre the exact same boards and you'll see in the clips, I'm riding a 33 litre 6.0 in the Monster Easy Rider in the epoxy, in, in the hi-fi construction, and in the PU version, which I put out last year, we're gonna steal some little clips from that, and I've got that exact, exactly the same. So the hi-fi, the PU, they're exactly the same dims. They paddle to me, in my mind, exactly the same. The difference is all about the flex in the board. That's where I think the main difference comes in when, we're, when you're comparing the boards, and I normally ride an epoxy board when the waves are gutless and you're having to generate your own speed, compress extension, really pushing against the board. I find the epoxy boards work best then. If the waves got push, I find I'd rather be on a PU. And I'll, I'll talk about the PU too. The PU boards, polyurethane. It's the old traditional way we've been building boards for since the 60s. After the balsa ones came through, we went to like a foam, polyurethane foam with a fiberglass laminate and finished off. That is still the way we build those boards today. Sure, there's a few little different things there, but the most refining is in the shape. The construction has nearly been the same for the last 50, 60, 70 years. That hasn't really changed. The epoxy is a hell of a lot different. You can get a variety of epoxy boards. The firewire ones that we see, they come completely different. You know, they do a timber tech, they do a sandwich construction for their um, for their hot a helium. Then the old days we were getting a lot of um, the tough light, the surf tech tough lights, which is a divinacell sandwich. So there's all these different ways of building them out of the epoxy. But the main thing, and that goes across all of them, they've got an EPS core or a high density. Sometimes you'll see HD. EPS, that's high density, so the foam is strong. And then it's a lot of them are glass, just standard, like your glass, the PUs, just with normal fiberglass and then epoxy resin over the top. The epoxy resin has a quite a high compressive strength and it also has a lot more flex in it, especially if you don't have the stringers in like you do in the PU boards. These ones, like the one that you'll see in the clip today, actually doesn't have a stringer. It's got carbon strips on the bottom. It's got a cross weave cloth woven into the fiberglass cloth and it's got a little carbon strip on the deck. So what that allows the board to do, which we might be able to see in here, but is flex a lot. So that's why I find in smaller surf, you'll find they can be really lively and easy to generate speed because the board's flexing as you compress and extend into it and pump and drive, the board will respond like that. Now in the clip, you'll see that I've ridden this in some pretty solid surf and even on a barreling ride, I would never normally ride that type of board or that construction in those waves, I'd be on the PU but we're doing this just for the camera and just to show that what, ca what you can do with these. The biggest thing about, I find with the, with the EPS, again, like I said, in the smaller surf, compress and extend, one thing I've learned is with that flex, I'd rather run a really, really stiff fin and often a slightly larger fin 
in the boards that have that flex that are going like that when you're pumping against them because you want really stiff fins and that helps you, you react and drive. Whereas in the PU, exactly the same shape, I'll run a more flexible fin a lot of the time. Uh, unless the surf's absolutely smoking, then I'll ride something a bit stiffer like a Tech Flex. But normally just a standard neutral Legacy Series fin or a Performer in the FCS range, I would run that in the PU board because the board's rigid and it's holding and holds in a lot better in the bigger surf anyway than the, um, than the epoxy. I find that epoxy construction, like I said, better in the smaller stuff. But let's watch a few clips and then we'll compare the two, come back and have a bit of a look. See you shortly. Enjoy. Yoo. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. That's right. For the record, you ain't trying to grow any stuff for you. That's right. For the record, lab on me going all the way. All the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to wish. Make y'all comfortable. That's right. For the record, you ain't trying to grow any stuff for you. That's right. For the record, lab on me going all the way. All the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to wish. Take advantage, I was wildin' On record, off record deals Tell them talk to Colin for the quote On record, off record, I still want to act, not the ghost For the record, I'm done tryin' make y'all comfortable That's right. For the record, you ain't tryin' to go to the stuff for you These boards are the Monster 2020 Easy Rider. Like I said, I've done the PU version of that and you can see that. What I found in the PU compared to the epoxy, if I could simply drop some of those clips against each other, you'll see that um, the PU does struggle a little bit because this is a really high performance board that's just scaled up for the bigger bloke, which I've been out of 2020, all the boards I reviewed, the Monster 2020 was my favorite um, performance shortboard out of the whole year that I did at board reviews. And with the epoxy, I think I can now ride that board even further down. So it's chipping away at when I'd normally ride a Monster Box or something simple like a one inch step down, two inch step down. The board's a performance board. By putting it into the, the Hi-Fi, you can ride it even lower sort of size. I, I can get it going now in waist high surf. So I'm finding that 
It's not of groveler, don't get me wrong, but by putting it into that construction of the high fine EPS, it's allowing me to generate speed and surf it more like a step down rather than a high performance board like it's actually designed for in the PU. I found the PU worked better in punchy waves that were overhead, whereas the high fire would allow me to surf it down. So that was a major difference there, even though the board's exactly the same shape. Because you just that little bit springy, a little bit lighter on your feet on the high fire, you can definitely ride that down further but I wouldn't be using it, and I have done in the clips, but I wouldn't normally be riding it in waves overhead. I think as soon as the waves got push, you're better off jumping on uh, a PU board with a stringer and you'll get the most out of those. So if you're comparing the two on the same model, the model is a performance short board but the Easy Rider Dims. Now, if you don't understand what the Easy Rider Dims are, JS have built a whole line around a, a performance board and they've done it in the Monster Box as well. What they've done is allow bigger guys like myself, normally in a Monster, a standard Monster, I'd have to ride a 6.3 or a 6.4 to get my Dims. Now, I don't really like riding performance short boards that long. I, I'm almost in a step up or a, or a nice little round tail when I'm riding boards that big these days. I know that's a joke. 20, 30 years ago, we were riding six fours of short boards. But these days, the way the rockers are and the curves are, I like my six fours, six threes to be for proper overhead surf and, and usually more like a forget me not or, or a round tail in a monster. Um, whereas this now, with the Easy Rider Dims, I can get 6033 litres in a performance board. So they've snuck all this foam in under the chest through it, but the board is still a blade and still a super high performance board, and you'll see that from the clips. So what, it, what the Easy Rider Dims, for a big bloke like me, or someone who's shorter and maybe a little wider, you can get those boards um, down into the 5.8s, 5.9s and have all this extra foam. You're not having to ride a long, narrow board to get a board like the pros are riding. I can't say anything bad about this board other than it really works best in the, in the high fi down around waist high and up to probably head and a half. And the PU I find better in head high and up. So comparing those two, the model is exactly the same. If you want to, um, if you want to surf, if your waves you surf are a little bit more gutless, but you want a performance board and you're, you're sort of surfing waves, you know, this size here, then you're way better off sticking with the epoxy. If you live in somewhere like WA where we've got quite punchy surf, you're probably better off. If you can't have both of them or don't want both of them, you're probably better off going for a PU. Strength-wise between the two, the Hi-Fi will get compression dents in it, just like a PU will, but you'll find that they don't dent as easy and as, as, as compressed as far as say a lightweight PU was. If you got a super light PU that weighed the same as this Hi-Fi, I think the Hi-Fi would have less dents. Obviously the PU weighs a tiny bit more, but it's stronger snapping wise as well. I think the stringer in them definitely helps if you're surfing bigger, punchier waves, you're way better off going for the PU version of that board. Anyway, I hope that sort of clarified a little bit the differences between EPS foam, the way they're glassed with the epoxy resin. The epoxy resin's got that more flex in it. A lot of them don't have stringers, allows the board to flex and grovel better. Whereas a standard PU we've been building forever, the good thing about these is they've got that stringer, they've got that strength there, and you also can ride them in slightly bigger surf and they will sit on the water beautifully and hold through turns a lot better than say an epoxy board once it's overhead and a bit of wind around. But I think it's a bit of a fallacy about the differences and the way you can ride your EPS boards less volume. I don't buy into it, I ride exactly the same. They don't feel any different to me other than construction. They paddle the same, they surf the same. So if you, yeah, you're not fucking bad, mate. So if you've got any questions and you want any more clarification about the differences, just throw down a comment in the bottom and I'll come back to you when I can. Only if the surf's no good. See you soon. Yeah.